Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome back to another episode of PyTest Basics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about test parameterization in PyTest. So in the past few videos, we've looked at some very simple test examples where all of our inputs to the functions that we're running were hard-coded into the tests themselves. Now, while this is perfectly okay for very simple tests or you know functions that we only want to run with a single input, there are often times where we want to vary the inputs to say some function that we're testing. Now, fortunately for us, PyTest provides a very nice way of doing this through another decorator, and that's going to be this at PyTest mark parameterize. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. And we'll go ahead and start with this simple example, test parameterize 0.py. And we see a couple of familiar faces here. We see our square function that squares the number, and then our test for the square function called test square. Now to add a parameter to our uh, test function, we can use this decorator at pytest mark parameterize that we get access to by importing pytest. Now the first thing that we're going to pass uh, as an argument to this parameterize marker is the name of the parameter that we want to add as a string. So in this case, we want to add a parameter named num, which we'll also add to the function signature for our test. So we added num here, and we'll add a parameter named num to our test function. Now, the next thing that we pass to parameterize is the list of values that we want our parameter or parameters to take. So in this case, we want num to take on the values of one, two, three, four, and five. So effectively what we're saying here is I want pytest to invoke my test square function with setting num is equal to one, then two, then three, then four, then five. So with this just with just a single line of effectively created five tests, right? Or five versions of this test square. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what this looks um, from a collection standpoint. So we'll run pytest dash dash uh, collect only on test parameterize zero dot py. And we see we get all five versions of our test, right? That we created using that pytest mark parameterize. And the arguments to our test function are going to be in these square brackets. So here is our test square function called with just or with, with the input argument of one, then with two, then with three, four, and five. So we have our five test variants. So let's go ahead and run this, make sure everything's working. So we'll run test parameterize zero.py. And you can see that PyTest collected all five of our tests that we created. They run, and then they all complete successfully. Okay, great. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next example. Look at some other features that Parameterize has to offer. So not only can we create a single parameter with this decorator PyTest mark Parameterize, we can actually add multiple parameters at the same time. So here in this PyTest mark Parameterize decorator, we're going to be adding two parameters, num and ref. And these are just going to be separated uh, by commas inside of the same string as an argument to our parameterize marker. And then we're going to add both of these um, parameters to the function signature of test square. So we added num comma ref here inside of the string, and we add num and ref as input parameters to this test square function. Now, because we have multiple parameters, we're not going to have just a simple list of values anymore. We're going to have a list of tuples, right? And this tuple is going to represent all the values that we're going to pass to our test on each invocation. So on the first call to test square, we're going to pass num is equal to one and ref is equal to one. And then on the second invocation of test square, we're going to pass num is equal to two and ref is equal to four and then three and nine, four and 16, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay, so that's the basics of how we can add multiple parameters at the same time. Let's see what this looks like from a collection standpoint. So we'll do pytest dash dash collect only on test parameterize one dot py. And we see our five test variants that have now two arguments, one for num and one for ref, the reference value um, that we're expecting to get when we call square on num. So we have test square with uh, num is equal to one, ref is equal to one, all the way down to num is equal to five and ref is equal to 25 down here. And we can run all of these tests as well. 
by calling pytest test parameterize onepy and all of our tests um, get collected, they run, and they complete successfully. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next example here. So we're not always going to have um, input parameters that are dependent on each other. So for example, if we looked at a, we look at a slightly different function here, so now instead of uh, a square function, we have a function that raises some base to some exponent that we'll call pow. Now in this case, base and exponent aren't dependent on each other. We can vary base independently of how we vary our exponent, right? We're just raising some base to some exponent. Now, um, because these two things are independent, we might want to vary them independently. And we can do this by adding multiple parameterized decorators here. So we don't need to add all of our parameters uh, all of our different parameters inside of a single parameterized decorator. So in this case, we have one pytest mark parameterize that adds an input parameter to our test called base, and another one that adds an input parameter to our test called exponent here. And we add both of these to our function signature of our test as well. Now we're varying these two um, parameters independently. So base is going to take on the values of one, two, and three, an exponent is going to take on the values of four, five, and six. And the important thing to note here is, you know, what is PyTest going to do about these uh, two parameterized decorators? And how is it going to combine these two inputs, right? Because our test pal takes two inputs. It takes both a base and an exponent at once, not just one or the other. So in this case, what PyTest will do is it will do a Cartesian product of all the inputs. So basically what it will do is it will create all possible combinations of all of these different inputs. So it'll add a variant for base is equal to one, exponent is equal to four, base is equal to one, exponent is equal to five, one and six. Likewise, it'll do two, four, two, five, and two, six, and then three, four, three, five, and three, six, right? So we should have nine total test combinations or test variants um, from these two parameterized markers, right? three values for base, three values for exponent, three times three is nine. So nine total variants of our test here. So let's go ahead and quit out of here and let's see all of those variants by doing pytest dash dash collect only on test parameterize 2.py. And we see all of our, uh, all nine of our test variants got collected, right? So all the way from 4.1, 4.2 and 4.3 down to 6, 1, 6, 2, and 6, 3. So our tests now within the square brackets have these multiple different um, arguments separated by um, a dash here or a hyphen. And we can run these tests as well by just getting rid of this uh, collect only argument. And we see that all of our tests get collected, all nine of them, they all run, and then they all pass successfully. Okay, so, you know, while it's very nice that all of our tests that we've created with these variants all run and complete successfully, this won't always be the case. So we're going to need to have a way to apply markers to say individual variants of the things that we're parameterizing to say maybe skip tests or exfail certain tests. And we can do just that through pytest.param. So let's go ahead and open up our third example here, this test parameterize 3.py. And we're going back to our old square function here and our test called test square. And here we have our pytest mark parameterized decorator, where we're creating just a single parameter named num. And then we have our list of values here. So we have one, two, three, four, and five, but we're doing something that's slightly different with three. Instead of just passing the value by itself, we're passing the value through pytest.param. Now this allows us to control some of the um, uh, behavior that we're going to have for this particular parameter. So with pytest.param, we can add first the value that we want num to take, and then additionally, we can apply marks for that particular value. So here we're setting marks equal to pytest.mark.skip, something we saw a couple videos ago. So in this case, we'll have five total test variants where num is equal to one, two, three, four, and five. However, when we get to runtime, um, our variant where num is equal to three will end up being skipped. So we won't actually execute that variant. And we can apply multiple different marks uh, through this param here. So we don't just have to pass a single mark. We can pass, say, a list of different marks that we want to set. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and see how that looks. And we'll first look at it from a collection standpoint. So we'll do pytest dash dash collect only on test parameterize3.py. And we see that adding that uh, that value through pytest.param and adding that marker didn't change collection whatsoever. So we still collected all five items, test square with one through five. However, when we go ahead and get rid of collect only and we try and run our test, we see that that single middle instance gets skipped, right? That, that input is equal to three gets skipped. So we have four tests that run and pass and then one test that gets skipped. And that's going to be the one that we marked with pytest.mark.skip. Okay, so we can also provide um, or apply marks to individual um, values through pytest mark parameterize. It's not an all or nothing thing where all tests get skipped or all tests get X fail or just or, or none of them do. We can apply them selectively to the individual values within pytest mark parameterize. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue on to our last example today. And that's going to be this test parameterize for.py. So, you know, so far we've looked at some very simple parameters that are just say single integers. So number one, number two, three, four, five, et cetera. So the names of our tests and what we're parameterizing end up being very, very small. However, you can imagine if we were parameterizing with something like file names or paths, et cetera, suddenly we'd have test names to get very, very large and start becoming difficult to decipher. And likewise, if we have multiple different things that were multiple different parameters and multiple different, say, decorators of PyTest mark parameterize, we can have a whole bunch of inputs with hyphens and it may be very difficult to understand uh, the meaning of such a variant. Now, fortunately for us, PyTest provides a way to give a logical name to a test, right? So rather than just having a list of all of the inputs to that test, through pytest.param, we can give a test an ID. So we can basically replace the name of that test with this ID. So here we have our simple square function and test square, and we have our values of num here, negative one, zero, and one. But instead of just letting the test call them, you know, you know test square, you know, square brackets with negative one, then with zero, then with one, we can apply an ID and just have uh, PyTest call this negative, and then zero, and then positive for a negative value, zero, and then our positive value. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like from a collection standpoint. So we'll do PyTest test parameterize for.py dash dash collect only. And we see that instead of having the actual value here, we now have our ID printed at collection. So we have test square negative test square zero and test square positive. And you can see we can run all these tests and they all complete successfully. Likewise, we can do the same kind of substring matching that we've done before. So I can do dash K zero to just select that case um, that I've labeled with ID zero. So our two other tests get deselected and just um, our test square with our ID zero gets run here. Okay. so. These are some nice ways that we can use to parameterize tests in PyTest. Of course, you can always learn more about test parameterization from the official PyTest documentation at docs.pytest.org. I'll go ahead and link down to this exact section of the PyTest guide below the video. Likewise, you can find all these examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. So if we go to repositories, you can find all of these under the PyTest repository under source. And I also have some written guides on PyTest as well, and even one on parameterizing tests in PyTest. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.